the United States of America, President Barack Obama. Good to see you, my friend. I just want to say everybody back home, right back at you. We appreciate you. You always get a straight talk. And welcome to Straight Talk. Well, today we have a broadcaster in the station with us. A young man who gets out on in the evening and make it set your soul on fire. You know, I always tell you that music soothes the raging bull. Mm -hmm. That's what this guy's about, soothing the raging bull at least one day a week. Brother Henry Cheatham, how you doing? Hey, thank you for that, that for having me on the show. Thank you very much. You, BON is one of my favorite stations. I listen to you, you listen to me. So let's let the audience see the both of us. That's right, that's right. See what everything is all about. That's right. What's, what's, what is, what is up, Cheatham? What's, what's going on? Well, you know, well, I got the VON uh, taste coming up. Taste? On, yeah, Saturday. Of WVON. Right, that's coming up Saturday. It'll be the ninth year that they've had that. You ninth know, year. we've had that, yeah, nine years. So that's one thing they got coming up. I don't ask me everybody, but I know Denise, Lisa, uh, Denise Williams will be there, MC Light, uh, Atlantic Star. I got the line up in my pocket somewhere, but I, not in my mind. I don't have it, you know, really thrashed out. I yeah. can't wait to see Denise. Yeah. It's been a long time. Right. You know, back in the 70s, uh, Denise Williams was with, uh, uh, with John Mathis? No, the, the, the blind boy. Uh, Clarence Carter? No. Oh, Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder. Yeah, okay, yeah, I okay. I see if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all these fabulous players that he play every night, uh, every, every Friday night. Friday right. night, what time do you start? I'm on Saturday night. Saturday night, Saturday, 11, p.m., yeah. uh, 11 p.m. Central Standard My Time. Mistake. Saturday. Yeah, every Saturday night from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. I took my superb span uh, place uh, as he became uh, unable to broadcast anymore. So that's how I got there to do it. I was helping him out in the uh, beginning. In the beginning, right. Yeah, I was helping him out. And so when he uh, was no longer able to do it, I decided, well, if I didn't do it, maybe they put rap in there or something. <laughs> or reruns. <laughs> you I didn't said, well, the rap. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, why not do it, you know, so. But anyway, in, 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 uh, Denise was with uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And uh, they broke up. Yeah. She come back to Chicago. Al Williams and I were partners. You know, Al Williams, four step brothers. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, he had he had a uh, an agency downtown, promotion agency, uh, and I had a movie theater, as you know, on the west side. Yeah. So we combined efforts, you know, to try and do some things together, and uh, I started Stars of Tomorrow. Channel 26. Oh, okay, yes, right. And in the interim, I had young guys, you know, to come on and promote themselves and, you know, just maybe get involved in music. And uh, I had this group, Patty and the Love Life. Okay, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> Man, heard they, were, they were bad. Yeah. I said, wait a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage those group, that group. Okay. And I said, we already got a manager. I said, well, what is he doing for you? Nothing. I said, <laughs> come on with me. Yeah. So uh, I said, I'm going to put you on the air every week for at least do one or two songs, you yeah. know, regardless of who we have as a guest. You come on and show the youngsters how they, how they should sound. So they agreed. Mm -hmm. And you rehearse at my at a nightclub on Madison. Okay. So you rehearse at my nightclub. Uh, it's, you know, combination nightclub, bowling alley. Yeah. And uh, first rehearsal night, first the, the group of girls come. I said, where's Patty? Oh, she can't make it tonight. I said, why can't she make it tonight? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> One said, well, we might as well tell you. She was misused and abused by her boyfriend. So I called them together, mm. took them off. I said, listen, I'm going to give you a weekly salary to make sure that she comes here on a, on, at the right time and she 
to go every place else at the right time. I want to hold you responsible for anything, yeah. that, anything that happened to her. I'm holding you responsible. Yes. So whatever happened to her, it's going to happen to you. Yes. <laughs> he said, what, what, what you mean? <laughs> I, said, I said, if she comes up injured, you're going to come up injured. <laughs> Your job is to protect her against everything. Yeah. He said, okay. At first he said you didn't want it. I said, you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you could take the money and do it, or you could do it, you're going to do it without the money, which mm, is, whichever yeah. you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay, I'll take the money. <laughs> so I gave him 250 a week. Yeah. And I gave him, I gave him 250 up front. She come to work, come to rehearsal that first time. Second time, the girl showed up. I said, where's Patty? He broke her arm. Your boyfriend did all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, well, okay, I can't work with her. I said, I can't work with her. Mm -hmm. So I went back. I I called the manager, asked him what did he think. And he said, I heard the same thing. You know, the arm was broken. I said, well, I'm going over there. He said, I'll meet you. So he met me there. And uh, <laughs> knocked on the door. I rang the doorbell. She came to the door. I said, uh, you gonna open the door? Why? I said, is uh, your man here? Yes, I said, I want to see him. But, you know, you ain't got nothing to do with this now. You ain't got nothing to do with this. Uh, you, you meddling in someone else's business. I said, oh, he worked for me, remember? Oh, well, here's your money back. I said, okay. I said, well, here's your contract. Okay, you can take it and do what you want to do with it. Because I don't have it, I don't, you know, I'm not with you anymore. Well, that's okay, I got a good manager, and uh, <laughs> he, he will do this, that, and the other. And they, this, my boss stepped around and said, you had a good manager. Yeah. <laughs> here's my contract, too. <laughs> he was coming over, to, he was going to do the same thing I was going to do anyway, give, mm -hmm. it, give it up. Yeah. But, you know, because she was just too... She was too great. Yeah, I to remember really Patty. Put in the position that, that she was put in, man. Yeah, yeah. So my, my, I'm leading up to the point. Al said, "Man, I, I, one woman just became available, just, just as good." I said, "Who is that?" He said, "She's in Gary, Indiana, Denise Williams." <coughs> Excuse me. I said, "No, you're kidding me." I said, "I heard of her. I've heard of her before. I mm -hmm. heard of her with Stevie Wonder." He said, "Yeah, that's her." I said, "Okay." So we went out to her house. And convinced her to join Patty in the Love Lights. She yeah. came on the show this first time, blew everything away, blew everything away. She took the lead, you know, she took Patty's mm. place as the lead singer. And uh, the next week, uh, she came on, Stevie Wonder was in town. I love telling this story. He saw her on TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, he heard her, he said, Hey, man. That's Denise Williams singing, yeah. Man, she sound better than she ever sounded before. Mm. Get her back here, get her back here. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to offer her a lot of money to get her back. Yeah. And they got her back and she worked with them. She left us, not that she hadn't signed a contract yet, mm. but she left us and went with them. And uh, which was a great thing for her because, you know, ain't no way in the world I could have done what yeah. happened for her right away anyway. Because, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire what, was on the show with them, and they heard us saying, man, we got to have that girl on the show with us. Mm. So they convinced her to do a record with them. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Paid her to do a record. Yeah. She did a record with them. That was the end of it. Oh, yeah. That's when, that's when Denise Williams became Denise Williams. Hell, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember working with uh, John Mather. They did a few songs together. Real good songs. Yeah, she <clears throat> she was she has a great voice, Denise. So I assume that she's been working a while. I have not uh, <clears throat> heard anything new from her, but her uh, catalog is uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah she's she great done voice. very very good. Yeah, that? great voice and all of that. Yeah. So I can't wait to see her and 
see her in action again. I, mm -hmm. I hear music. I play records all the time, but to hear and see her in action again would be yeah. great. But anyway, V.O.N. Yeah, V.O.N., that's right. Station with a history and legacy and all of that, you know. Everything. Yeah, it has a lot of personality, you know, there. I do the show. A dynamic leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do the show uh, uh, once a week, like you said before, Saturday night uh, from uh, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Central Standard Time. And, I, you know, I'm, I do, the name of the show is uh, Classic Blues and R&B. Uh, came up that name because I uh, wanted to be able to do the classics, you know, the uh, Johnny Lee Hookers and all of that, as well as there are some new artists out here right, doing blues. Right. There are some young guys and girls out here that are doing blues, and uh, I wanted to uh, use a format where I can encompass, you know, the entire music genre. Of, I got one that you know. She's which one? dynamic. Which one? <laughs> Jenny Holiday. Yeah, she been on the show. Yeah, Jenny Holiday. I, I so played her music. Now, she wasn't on the show. She, I have played her music. Yes. Yeah, she got a couple of good songs on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. I said there's a lot of local artists that are uh, good, but there's artists across the country too, that uh, you know that uh, are doing music, and there's some good bands. I got a CD by Muddy Waters, oldest son, and. Mud Morganfield. I got his last CD, and his daughter is on there with him. And that track, I'm telling you, uh, wonderful. Who loves you? <laughs> I think that's the name of Who yeah, Loves yeah. You. But he, she and he, boy, I mean, they did a hell of a doggone job with it. Very, very good. It's a very good CD, Mud did, you know. Yeah. He's also been on the show with me there, he and his mother. He always tra seemed like he always traveled, you know, around domestically with his mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. He's with him, you know. They keep him out of trouble, you know. <laughs> well, sometimes you need that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm just I'm a, I'm elated about the fact that uh, we got a female. It's really dynamic. Melody Pan Cooper. Oh yeah, the general manager, man. president, right? Yeah. Yeah. She she she's taking B O N to another level. Right, she's done a good job in there, uh, transitioning from her father to where she is now. Yes, yes. And I was just reading in the Sun Times today. I think yeah, the Sun Times today that she is uh, has been nominated. Don't know if it's confirmed. I think it has to be uh, to the Illinois Liquor Board. You know, which is a good thing. Congratulations to you, Melody, if you're watching us. You know, congratulations to you. Uh, uh, boy, you you very well know. I mean, you had a liquor license when you had your club, yeah, right? Yeah. It, it, it is not something that you can just get, right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I say, if you got a license of any kind, do your best to maintain that license, you know. Even if you're not using, you know, you're actively, you know, participating in that particular field. But if you got that license, you get that, you hold on to it and uh, do the best you can to pay it. I got a, a cousin who was a lawyer, <clears throat> and he was with the uh, federal government, the, uh, with the, the prosecuting attorney, you know, the one who uh, go around and yeah. <laughs> got yeah. Art Kelly and got Epstein. Right, and those. right. He, he was out there. He was doing it. And, uh, Homeland Security. It, no, it was under the the, the federal, the, you know, the same one at Elliot Nashville, what the hell, I forget, what the federal prosecutor, that's what I'm looking for, Fitzgerald and all those guys. And uh, his father, when he was alive, who, he's my, like I say, he's my cousin, his father would always pay his law, make sure his law uh, uh, license, you know, was yeah, current yeah. and all. And so he said when his father passed, he said he kept doing it, you know, I said, yeah. And I said, you did the right thing. I said, because once you lose stuff like that, you know, it's hard, you know, all of the bureaus and a lot of become more expensive and just ridiculous to, you know, they gotta go through all hoops just to get it, you know, but yeah. And do you still have your liquor license? Oh, no. You, know, no. you got rid of it. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody should drink that stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know, well, I tell you what, with J.B. Prisca, you might not be doing too much drinking with the taxes and stuff that's, he put that's out here, man. man. It's just, see, actually, 
<laughs> you know, you brought up another, another uh, very important discussion that I, I like to say on a daily basis so those who didn't watch yesterday were here today that we got to get control of our politicians. They're Definitely. out of control. Definitely. In the state of Illinois, they're out of control. Yeah, definitely. See, uh, uh, they're, they're so much out of control that they're stupid. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, the point is, the reason I say that is because every other state in the union has a recall law. Yeah. You know what the recall law do? That, that recall law, yeah. like, defends them from being put out of office by the public. Yeah. Because the Constitution says that the public has a right it's true. to go and tell one of those elected officials, any elected official, right. to get out of office if you're not doing the job That's he hired right. you to do. That's right. Get them up out of there. That's exactly right. Which is a good thing to have recall. Uh, no, no. This, this is a law without recall. Oh, okay. All without right. recall. Yeah, the, well, the public citizen has, right now in the Illinois, Chicago, we have a right to go up into the office and tell the alderman, the mayor, the state representative, the senator, whomever they are. You yeah. have a right to walk in and tell them, hey, you're not doing the job we hired you to do. That's true. Get out of office. <laughs> well, I'm doing this. I, no, 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 that's, that's for your pocket, uh, your, 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 your whoever you're doing it for, because yeah. it's not helping us at all for right, you to not sell doing the city streets, that's true. for you to sell all those parking meters. Uh, but the, the, the devil, Without I, my permission, you sold yes, those parking meters. I don't understand, I don't what understand citizen, how that could happen. What percentage of citizens in the city of Chicago gave you permission to sell? Yeah. To, well, the alderman voted. Yeah, but the they, alderman, didn't, they didn't, the come alderman didn't come to us. Right, yes. And I asked, well, I didn't know that. That's just going to be his excuse, and I don't blame him. Right. <laughs> Put it off on these aldermen who are stupid enough to go yeah. and vote without talking to their constituents first. That's exactly first. right. That, that, that is exactly right. It, you know, it's like this, uh, how these... Uh, politicians out here playing now with our immigration law. Right. You know, I mean, wait a minute. We have laws in the land, and immigration law, you know, you come through the State Department. You apply for citizenship, apply to come to the country, and that's what you do. Right. And okay, now you're here, you got a 60 day, uh, 90 day, or whatever. And I tell people, I said, do you realize that when you look at athletes, pro athletes, who are playing baseball, in basketball cover, there's quite a few of them. I said, these guys come here as a seasonal worker. These guys work. At the end of the season, those guys have to do one or two things, apply to stay here or go back home or what have you. you know, there's a process, you know. I said, this is the same thing about people coming to the country. We used to have a hell of a migration law for workers, you know, farmers, you know. Uh, we had a bunch of people in our country who were citizens, uh, who were migrant workers. And we would bring so many people in. Many of them came from Mexico and, you know, that area, you know. But to see what's going on now, to me, is just ridiculous. I mean, we have a right as Americans. We have a right to, you know, let who in our country. We're not against immigrants. Right. You know, right. I mean, we're not against immigrants at all. You know, people have a right. Yeah, you know, be an immigrant, we come in, you become a citizen. You can go to other countries. What's wrong with our country? Why is our country so uh, yeah. uptight? Yeah, you know, so... It's a lot of, it's, yeah, the politicians are doing what they want to do, which they don't have the right to do. They need lawyers. <laughs> they take the hell out of it. You know, they, uh... The just like we, trained doctors? Huh? Most of them are just like trained doctors. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they won't do what they know is to be right. How in the hell Dale is not in jail for tearing up the airport? You go out there and knock the street side down. You got to pay for that. You're just a city employee, Daly. Right. You know, and you're now who in the hell you a are? A city you? employee who is employed by the public. That's right. Before and you tear down anything that belongs to the public, you know, you have to get permission yeah. from the public. I still don't know why he ain't he gone to jail. He should be, but <laughs> maybe they get it with Burke and uh, if they get Madigan down there, I they might get a little bit better. They want to put it all on Runner, but hell, uh, <laughs> he did the same thing to, to McGloy, you bitch. Runner, yeah. man, Runner. <laughs> Went into office. The first two weeks he was there, he called a meeting of the black chamber mm. and told us what he intended to do. Yeah. He said the PLA, as as we knew it all along, he asked if we knew about it. Yeah, we knew about the PLA. We knew I was holding back black employment because 
a black company, you didn't have you didn't have many black companies who had the capacity to bid on a billion dollar contract. Okay. So you join together two or three people, two or three companies, right. and build a capacity. Right. But the PLA say no, you can't do it. You got to be one person to bid, one company. You can't bid as a group. And that's that was to eliminate us. Okay. And it did eliminate us. And this is what Rana said. He said, okay. He said, then you got to know, I'm stopping, I'm not signing the budget until they take the PLA out of the budget. Now, all the black legislators went over to Chicago State, and they had all the black activists and preachers there, well, as many as they could get in. And each legislator came up and talked about what a rotten governor this is. He stopped the budget, and poor people can't get their child care necessary, and all that blah, 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 blah. I turned to my partner and said, don't they have a veto-proof House and a veto-proof Senate? Yes. <laughs> well, why did, what did they talk about? All they had to do was veto, uh, veto the damn, uh, uh, but the veto his, his, his legislation and yeah. go ahead on with the, he said, man, let's get out of here. So we got to walk out of the meeting. Yeah. So the idea is the man had the right frame of mind for our community. Yeah. But our community is hell bet on a party labor. Yes, I mean, that's something I cannot understand. You know, the black person, you supposed to black vote Democratic, and not me. I vote for who is the best interest of my I vote for the person, country. not no right. damn party. I mean, yeah, that's exactly right. And that's one of the problems and one of the things that holding the black political power back is that they strictly uh, in bed with the Democrats. They don't even have sense enough to go to another party. Hey, look, you got 25 folks, half over here and half over there. That's what the Jewish community does. And other communities, hey, they, no, we ain't oh, all in oh, one we go, we go with the one that's going to do for our community. Yeah. It don't matter about half or this. Right. right. Don't it, care what party he's in or yeah. she. Yeah. And, and we got to understand, one thing is we got to start controlling our wards. That's true. See, that the war commitment had no business going downtown yeah. and saying yay to sell their parking meters right. without first talking to his constituents. Oh. So they all violated the law. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I just, that, you know, and I can't see why there isn't a lawyer out there, a lawyer is out there, who uh, cannot find a way that this contract can be broken. I know it can be broken. You know, any contract oh, can, yes, can be broken. Oh, yes, I know broken. it can. I know, you know it but can. But this is totally ridiculous. Here it is. By the, by the mere fact that the public did not authorize that, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's, it's, it's an illegal sale. So bring your money, bring your money back to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And the thing of it is, too, WL, is that all of those parking meters, the years that, 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 that we had those meters, all of those parking meters were paid off. Right. Every penny that was going into the parking would have came right into the public car, you know, the uh, city coffers. And it, yeah. it, it was coming into city coffers. That's how you kept the streets clean. Yeah. You kept the streets paved. You kept the sidewalks paved. You know, that's just... And that was just part of it. Yes. Then the rest went for other things that the yeah. city needed. But now, without that, we got holes in streets that we yeah. <laughs> that's been there for uh, years. Yes. You know, and you got you're still messing with your money. You know, with the little money they got. Yeah. They got they hire. Inferior contract, but well, not inferior. These people know how to do it. They know how to mm -hmm. uh, pave your streets in a way that they'll be gone, be need paving again next year. That's right. Or uh, before the year is up. That's true. See, that keeps that money circulating with That's them right. at all times. That's right. But I know that. What, what are you? Why are you telling me these city officials don't know that? If I know it, I can see it. Yeah, that's true. You know it's. Uh but of course, Pritzker, you know, with him uh, in office now, we uh, probably gonna have another raise. Well, it's not probably the uh, parking is gonna raise up again, you know, because they've already that's part of the uh, thing that he brought through. It's part of the laws that he brought in. With, parking, uh, yeah, 
Where? In the city? Yeah. He doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just yeah, he does. City. Uh, under that new budget, he, he, dealt, yeah, he came out of parking. There's also tax increases on it, you know. In order for the state to get some. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know. Well, see, the people don't understand. They, uh, first off, politicians <laughs> who are running a multi billion dollar corporation should be a businessman. Not a politician. I agree a businessman. That. That's why I guess. Well, they say, well, well, Frisk is a billionaire. Yeah, he inherited his money. He didn't make it as an entrepreneur. Right. He did not deal. He did not run not one of those hotels up from the ground. That's that's true. So, you know, we 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 we're, we're just. This is a backward. <coughs> this is just a backward state. Yeah. It's not. It's not really. It's a bunch of backwards people in here who are allowing there that you, to there happen. There you go, people allowing it to happen. Well, let's, let's face it. In communities other than the black community, you don't get this kind of treatment. That's true, I don't too. Think, I don't think in all of them will come to see. Because they did with that, that meter, though, didn't they? But right, all of all 50 of them, I think one or two that, I forgot how many, but, but only a few that did not vote for it, you know. Yeah. I wonder how did they get away with that? Well, they community. figure that it's going, you know, they... Yeah, maybe that's why so many of them lost. Well, but they community. probably figured also that they had so many that were going to vote for it, so if I vote against it, it won't matter. Right. You know, at least I can say I voted against it. Right. You know, so... Yeah. You know, they all got a little stipend to do, <laughs> to, to do the right thing. <laughs> Part-time <laughs> job, and they're getting big money off of it anyway. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But what do you think about our new mayor? Well, I, I think I think she's going to do the right thing. I think she's going to do the so, right yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I do hope so. I hope she does a good job. From what I've heard so far, yeah. one thing that really impressed me was the fact that she said, water, people talking about turning folks' water off because they didn't pay a water bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That God created that water for man to live by. Yeah. How are we going to, you know, we didn't make water. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, she said, ain't nobody going to get no water turned off for that reason. Now, right. I heard some different things. There's probably, uh, uh, there's some hypothetical stuff that, that has come out about that. I'm, I'm not going to even mention that because I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, don't think it's true. But I think she's going to do a good job. She had the I'm foresight. hoping that she does a good job. I uh, definitely. She had the foresight to understand <clears throat> that folks say, I, did, I, got, I didn't say it, but people say Hale was murdered. Because I have he, no idea. I loved him. That's the only yeah. thing I know. I loved well, him. And he, I did, he did not follow the democratic tradition. He did not follow them at all. In fact, I've seen people go to Influential, influential people in Chicago. Can you talk to, uh, 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 t talk to Harold for us? You know, talk, talk. No, 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 no. Harold is the mayor. What, what, what am I going to talk to him about? Well, he'll listen to you. And we need, listen. You already told the people that if Harold became mayor, I'll be running Chicago. Now, were you trying to make that stunt come true? Mm -hmm. He said, I don't have anything to do with that. That's mm -hmm. the man's job, take care of his own business. Yeah. So he got, he, you know, I, was, I, I had to look in the room to see if he was on his knees begging. <laughs> <laughs> begging, Jesse. You know who that was? Who? Fast Eddie. Who? Fast Eddie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, now, you know, let me tell you something. When you talk about that period. Burke, to me, is a bigot, okay? Eddie Vidoliak, to me, was a politician. Whatever he, whatever deal he could do, he wanted to do it. And, you know, he had a lot of, uh, from my understanding, a lot of influence and a lot of businesses in the uh, black community here on the south uh, east side, you know. And I think that what he, he wanted to make a deal, and he wanted to have that deal where he can control certain things, you know. And... But on the other hand, Burke was just, uh, you know, just a guy who, he's just a bigot, that's what I'm concerned. <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, that's the only way I can put it, you How know. How you say you're a bigot, though? Bigot on what? what, what well, context? you know, to what I mean, uh, anything, uh, any person who is non-Irish, 
was not part of the Irish, as Jane Burns aptly called it, the cabal. Well, that, that, that war that, uh, that uh, he adopted, him and his wife adopted, is not Irish. Well, you know, what was the purpose of that and why? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't but, know the whole thing behind that. But the that, idea is the know. boy lived well, and he's, he's, he's wrong now, and he's, you know. Yeah, how is the boy? Have you seen or heard anything from him since? I hear from him. I, don't, I haven't seen him. I hear uh, he's doing I very he doing, well. doing well. Good. Yeah. That's good, you know. But I uh, don't know why and how that happened. You know, I don't know. I don't, uh, uh, I just not, could not see him being paternal toward, you know, a young black kid. Like, that. I, I, that's well, just me. He, he fought it. He fought it. Yeah. You know, you know he had people if he did a good job in raising them, then God bless him, you know. Yeah. yeah. He fought, he fought the fact that uh, they tried to take him from him. Yes, I, I understood the uh, protests and all yeah. that the people were out here dealing with, yeah. Mm. In fact, I, you know, I knew the boy's mama. And uh, I talked to her. I said, "Well, yeah, how's she doing?" You know, haven't seen her lately. Uh, haven't seen her lately. But mm. yeah, well, that's a good thing. I give him credit for that. If he, you know, to get young men turned out well, you know, that's a, that, that's that's very positive on it. But I just uh, don't have a, you know, some people you just just don't get a good feeling by, it, you know. Uh, See, the point the point is the kid the kid was in a a home, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's what they, they said she wasn't qualified to keep him, so mm. they, they took him out of the home and put him in, gave him a home. Yeah, well, they, they, you know, something, you know, that's some do good. The people who want to do the right thing, you know. Yeah. But it, I just find I just find it hard, you know, for him. You know, I, I've uh, covered him when I did some news and stuff like that, and just to, uh, you know, I, he and I always, you know, we cordial. You know, that's the, I'm doing my job, he's doing his, you know. But it just I don't know, you know, some folks, you know, you just do not, <laughs> you know, have a good feeling about it, but. When he and Pat said were, they were cohorts for many years. Yeah, but I just saw the Vodoliak in a different light, you know, because I knew him uh, a little bit too, you know, in covering him, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he wanted to wear his tailor-made suits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flamboyant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, here's an Irishman and here's a Slavic, you know what I'm saying, you know, so therefore, you know. I think, I think we better take a commercial before we run out of time. All right, do read you the show. We'll be right back after these messages. Come to Golden's Tropical World for tropical fish of all sizes, colors, and types, and other small animals like iguanas, and birds from all over the world. There are beautiful tanks, pet supply needs, including dog and cat foods, and expert consultation. Check out Golden's Tropical World, 8611 South Ashland Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Call ahead, 773-239-8809. Your pet shop. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Like 
working with your family? <laughs> Good <laughs> question. Right, great question. <laughs> Original Soul Vegetarian was established over 38 years ago from our parents. So we're second generation owners. Back then in the 80s, nobody knew what vegan looked like. But if you say, oh, this is barbecue, they'll eat it and say, oh, it's good. Original Soul Vegetarian has been an anchor in this community. At least 90% of our clientele aren't vegans. It has helped the community a lot with being aware of healthy eating and healthier options. Most of everything that we sell is sourced locally and it's all made in-house because it's just not about food for us. Your health is your wealth. Just add something healthy to what you're eating. You're gonna feel better. Why? Why? Why are you following me? Why my hoodie make me look suspicious? Why does my music make me dangerous? Why are people that are supposed to protect me attacking me? Why are you afraid of me? Why do you think I'm dangerous? Why do I afraid the people who are supposed to protect me? Why can't I make a peace sign without you labeling the gang sign? Why does standing on ground only work when I'm on the ground? Why do you show this photo over this one? Why do you only stop and frisk me? Why do you have low expectations for me? Why can't I run down the street without causing alarms? Why do you think I'm a thug? Why do you assume I'm armed? Why can't I break? Why is my mom scared every time I leave the house? Why are you targeting me? Why am I a target? Why? 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 I know why. And it has to stop. It must stop. Because I have dreams. Because I can change the world. Because I will make a difference. Because I have a family. Because I am strong. Because I am talented. I have a voice. I can find a cure. I have goals. I can lead the country. I am determined. I have a future. Because I'm a scholar. I am powerful. I'm someone's friend. I'm someone's brother. I'm someone's son. Someone loves me. And because my life matters too. My life matters. 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 All lives matter. And so did theirs. world. Come to Golden's Tropical World for tropical fish of all sizes, colors, and types. And other small animals like iguanas and birds from all over the world. There are beautiful tanks, pet supply needs, including dog and cat food and expert consultation. Check out Golden's Tropical World, 8611 South Ashland Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Call ahead, 773-239-8809. Your pet shop. Good. How many subscribers you got in there? I don't know if these are subscribers or viewers. Yeah. But good. Oh. We're back. I was getting my picture taken. You don't mind me getting a picture taken, do you? <laughs> I was posing beautifully. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's, that's our Tony. But anyway, uh, hmm. yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's something else when we really get down to it. Oh yeah. But she do I think one day we're gonna wake up and realize who we are. That would be nice. You know, and we, and we, gotta, we gotta go, stop going around talking about white folks hate us. 
Yeah. White folks hate us. Now, every white folks, every white person is not a bigot. There's no, there's no question about that. So well, first good of all, white folks out there. First off, you got to understand that uh, I can, you can go all the way back to slavery, but let's just stop it at, 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 at uh, Martin Luther King. All right. No, let's don't stop it here. That's it. Who helped blacks in, get through the railroad, the, the underground railroad? Sure. What was the underground road? What was the, the stops that they were making? Who That's owned true. those houses? Who That's owned those true. businesses where they stopped, That's where they true. put them off at? That's true. And who was taking them? Who, right. was, who was leading them? Yeah, and that's why when I hear someone say America is a big, uh, U.S., well, I call it America, that's the whole continent, but mm -hmm. America is, uh, U.S. of A. is, uh, you know, a bigoted country. That's not true. Like the uh, Congress lady from uh, Minnesota want to say. But no, that's not true. It's not a bigoted country. You got some bigots in it. Right. You got some, you know, people who are pathetic within it. And you got fights, whites who will fight those bigots. That's true. Exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, so uh, you have to judge a man or woman individually. To me, that's the best way. I, uh, what kind of guy double it? I don't know. Then you ask, what kind of guy? Well, I know him to be this kind of guy. Right. You know, I mean, because you, you have a relationship with that, you know. I, 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 I tell, I tell our, our viewers, who were the first people killed in Mississippi during Martin Luther King's march through the Mississippi trying to get black people registered? Mm -hmm. Who were the first people murdered by the bigots? Mm -hmm. That's true. Huh? That, that's true. I mean, two white guys. And one black guy. Yeah. They were out trying to get people, trying to get blacks registered to vote. Yeah. And the thing about it too is that <clears throat> when I look at it, people always think it's a poor white person. I said, but let me tell you something. Poor white people, <laughs> they get elected and they go to Congress, but rich white folks are the ones who tell you what law is going to be good for you. I mean, I said, that's, that's what it's about. A lot of folks don't like Jerry Springer and those kind of shows, Mar I said, but when you look at those shows, to me, I see a real bit of America, you know, American citizens out there. You know, and you see, you know, how they interact with one another, you know, white girl going with a black guy, vice versa, you know, and, the, you know, the relationship that right, they have, right. you know. Being a Southerner. No, you know what, you know what that is? Hmm. That's, see... We don't, we don't understand that this country is ran by, well, this, not just this country, the free world is ran by the plutocrats. The world, period. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with that. The whole free world is ran by the plutocrats. The plutocrats are the 100 richest families in the world. Mm. Now. They, they don't say, the Constitution, all you got to do is read the dictionary. The dictionary will tell you that. <laughs> that the plutocrats, you, when you say protocracy, look up the word protocracy. Yeah. It will tell you the, 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 the uh, how do they put it, the ruling class of people, uh, of influential people who uh, influences governments of the free world. That's true. That is true. They don't say rule the government, they say influence the government. Right. That means they rule them. That's true, exactly <laughs> and, right. And, and uh, the Constitution, see, we don't pay any attention to the Constitution. The Constitution says, in essence, because the American public may not be sophisticated enough to elect the right person to the office of president, we have the Electoral College to straighten it out. Exactly right. Now, people say, well, uh, uh, Trump only won by the, by the Electoral College. Now, if we had voted a little bit longer and got more votes, you would have still lost, fool. The, the, you weren't intelligent enough to elect the people that the plutocrats wanted. Yeah. So you, he lost by almost 3 million votes, yeah. but he's still the president. Yeah, popular vote, yeah. Right. So, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> It's crazy, man. We right. get we got to we got to just get our heads screwed on properly. And the thing that bothers me about people who say, "Well, let's get rid of the electoral college," oh, it's antiquated. You didn't say that when President Obama won. You didn't say that when Clinton, you know, whoever the president you wanted, 
won the doggone thing. Right, right. So if it's no good now, was it no good then, you know? But you had the first lot, I don't think many of our well, citizens... They couldn't have could won. It would have it would, it would, it been a riot if, if, they, if, they, if, they had, if Obama had lost the popular vote. <laughs> and the, uh, so they had, they had to make sure that he won that election. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why he he, he he raised almost a billion dollars or more. Yeah, and that, again, it didn't come from the average person. It Ooh. was coming from those who. I, I remember once, and I was working in Indianapolis, Indiana, at the time at WISA Channel Eight, and uh, Andy Young. He was a a congressman. He had been. I think that was, may have been his first or second election, and he said, you know. I got elected. Could have been his first one because I know he was talking about it. It could have been his second, but he was talking about when he first got elected. Mm -hmm. He said, the first somebody who came to my office was somebody from Coca-Cola. None of the, you know, the uh, so-called, you know, the, the, the activists, you call right, them, right. none of them came to his office. But the, uh, this is how these people influence things. You know, Coca-Cola comes to you, U.S. Steel comes to me, Ford, or what have you. That's what they do. They pay people to do that. That's a full-time job for me to go and try to influence you since you got elected. Right. Because right. I want some legislation that's going to be good for me, <laughs> you know, or for my industry or what have you. Well, and that's what they do. You well, know. see, they, they, they have to get permission to do that. They have to get permission to, uh, to, to, to let be influenced, yeah. depending, on what, depending on what it is. Depending on what it is. But if it's something that uh, this, this, you was elected to do, I guess, and you, 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 you don't have enough money. <laughs> you, you there's should. not enough money available for you to even think about influencing that person to do what you. You shouldn't. It should not be. I mean, you, but they, these guys, it's a full-time job to find out what committees W L gonna get on now that he got elected. Let's see what we're gonna do with the. And it's not a, it's not a, a 24-hour thing. It's a constant. Right. You know. You know. 365 that people right. are out here doing this because that's, you know, the pharmaceutical industries and what have you, you know, they got a sp special interest, you know, they want to see that their agenda is carried out by you because you represent me in that doggone district, you know. That's right. So, if, if people really uh, took the time to really look at this thing and say, well, okay, the president, it doesn't matter who the president is, but it does matter who is your U.S. Senator. Who is your U.S. congressman? Who is your state congressman? Your state rep? Your, you know, it, those things matters because this is the kind of government we have. We have a representative government. <laughs> we want and, people and, to represent us. You and, know, and and the president really stays on international issues. That's, that's yeah, and you know, the president. The biggest thing the president has is elect his cabinet, nominate Supreme Court nominees. Now. None of those are guaranteed because he has to go through the Senate, you know, to get these people confirmed. And they have to be on his, if, if they're not in his party, they're not going to be confirmed. Yeah, it's just it's a lot of things, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, people don't even, they, they just react to it. It's like you take a monkey, you throw a bag of peanuts out there, they react to that. <laughs> they're not thinking about what they were doing before <laughs> or what you're trying to get them to do, you know. They're trying to take all of your kids away. But he's worried about that uh, peanut. You understand that you too that the plutocracy owns maybe half the Senate mm -hmm. and half the House, mm -hmm. so they can win anything they want to win at any time they want to win it. Yeah, they got enough influence. They will do right. that. Yeah. And uh, the things that don't matter, whether it's Democrat or Republican. Mm -hmm. That's the only time nobody they don't get involved. Right. And you know another thing that the American people don't even think about, that we have an election every year. <laughs> you know, we, we have an election every year, you know. Right. Every two years you you know, every year every two years we get in our congressman. Every uh two years we get in another senator. You know, all State of that stuff. You know, then we get to the pre then see if you really look at and understood how this government works. You know, hey, you would be working on all those things at all time trying to say, okay, how do I get a governor here that's going to serve my interests, a senator? You know, that's what it's all about as far as I'm concerned, you know. Keep you off balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just voted for Yeah, well, you guess what? 
President Trump just got elected. Guess what? He's now coming up for another election next year. <laughs> you know, and with him will be so and, many senators. And you if know. he doesn't, if he hasn't done the job that he was hired to do, then you got a right to vote against him. No, I say if he hasn't done the job yeah. that he was hired to do by the plutocrats. Oh, I got you. Yeah, he's going to win again. Yeah, you know, Bush <laughs> lost to lost to uh, Gore the first time. Yeah, people filed a complaint. <laughs> and uh, took it to the Supreme Court. When they had a hearing, they said, uh, where's Mr. Gore? Mr. Gore's not here, Your Honor. They said, well, we can't have a hearing without the victim. They said, we're the victim. We, we voted for him, and, and you got somebody else going into office. Yeah. He said, well, I hear what you're saying, but we need the victim here, yeah. the real victim. So I'll give you 10 days to get Mr. Gore here. I, I said 10 days. Back. It could have been two weeks. <laughs> yeah. so he said, uh, when they came back for the next hearing, justice came out and said, well, where's Mr. Gore? Mr. Gore said he had a golf game. <laughs> <laughs> Gore said, hell, it wasn't my turn. I'm like, I don't want to go lay down. Yeah, that's right. Game. It's all over. Forget about it. Let me, <laughs> let me go to Hollywood, you know, <laughs> do something else, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, and then to come around the next four years, you know, nobody wanted that boy in the office. Yeah. He was a, they come around four years, he lost to the next person. Yeah. And still became the president twice. Yeah, that's true. Now, they found out later that they, they had a contract two or three years before they were elected into office to rebuild the oil wells that was destroyed mm -hmm. in Kuwait. Yeah. But they haven't been destroyed yet. <laughs> You're doing with a contract. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's another joke, you know. I, as I look at, you know, the, the people out there running, talk about running against uh, President Trump. Trump. The lady from Hawaii, she's a veteran, served in, the, I think, Iraq. This woman, now, she has, uh, to me, a pretty good idea about some things. But people don't want people don't want to hear what she has to say. We have no business in Iraq. We had no business overthrowing the government of Libya. We have no business in uh, 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 Assyria now. You know we have no business there. These people have a right to determine. If you got a dictator there, at least you got some peace right now. Now you're trying to overthrow the government of uh, Venezuela. That's crap. You know you don't do that. You know people voted for Duro. He's the president, you know, and if they wanted to get rid of him, then the people will do it. But we're going to pick someone and say, well, yeah, he's a legitimate government. That's not, that's crap. We've done that too many times, and every time it's come back to hunt you. That's, that's why the relationship with Iran is the way it is, but you know. Trump ain't doing nothing but what he's told by the crew. Well, yeah, you know, well, yeah. <coughs> I don't think, you know, I, I, I like his stand when he said he was not interested in a regime change, and that was a good thing, you know. Uh, but you got that bastard uh, Bolton. No use for him. You got some people around him, you know, who that's all they want to do is try to, wait a minute, wait a minute. These people, you look at the last three, uh, out there trying to get President Trump, uh, talking about Russia influence. <laughs> you know, wait a minute. You can talk about in influence <laughs> in our country, but what about the influence that we've done across the world? You know, so it just makes no sense to me. And uh, But, you know, people listen to it and uh, they don't, you know, read and think for themselves and, uh, you know, try to really understand things. But I do like her stance on, you know, a couple of issues, you know. Uh, Gabbard is the last name. Yeah, you know, but we'll see what happens in 2020, you know, whichever way it go, you know. It ain't going to go but one way. <laughs> if he had not done his job, maybe he wasn't supposed to do it all in one, one yeah, yeah. In four years. It's going to take him eight years. Yeah. It's like, like, like Bush. Yeah. Bush got the first part out, yeah. but then he had to go back and they had to destroy the oil wells in Kuwait. But you know what, Double uh, L, I tell anyone this, I am so glad that it's President Trump and not Bloomberg. I mean, here's Bloomberg, you know, he was the mayor of New York. Right. But that bastard do at the end of his term, legislative term, well, I still need some more time to take care of the business. And then they gave him another term even though his term was up, 
by the Constitution and all that other stuff. They gave that champ another turn. I said, that's arrogance. I said, how in the hell would, you know, President Trump is up in eight years or so all of a but sudden the same thing that President Obama had done. I mean, you know, did he run again? He ran again, right? No, yeah, he ran it. Yeah, they let him stay another four years. Oh, what, he was supposed to stay another four? Yeah, he, he no, he was not. Oh, he, you know, look okay. it up. They check got two it out. Terms. They got two, two right. Terms yeah, you know, you two terms. You out. You oh, know, I no. And they, and I, my t I have not finished doing what I wanted. To do, what I needed to do. It. And this bastard was able to get uh, more time, which is, to me is ridiculous. What are you talking about? You know, how can you change the constitution for you and not me? But by the same token, maybe been a good thing. Well, <laughs> I don't think it was good because you're going to change the rules for you. Why didn't you? You know, you got to play by the same rules. Yeah, but if you got the power to <laughs> to play those rules, play those rules. Especially, I, I I go for it when it's in my favor. Yeah. You know, and I think that I think what he what Bloomberg would do would be in our favor. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad he's not the huh? billionaire that uh, the New Yorker that ran and won. I'm glad that you know because uh, I don't tell him what he would have done. You know, what I mean, that just. Uh, you got a different agenda than I have, you know. And I am, you know, for the American people, you know, this is, I, you know, this is what it's supposed to be about, not about well, double L. But see, it, it, if he if he if he won the, I mean, if he earned that billion dollars <laughs> the right way as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. then yeah, he should be the mayor. But see, uh, of of any entrepreneur who has the ability to make ten million dollars or more mm -hmm. a year. Could run a a, a a large corporation like New York or Chicago, or you know, because he would know what to do. And a uh, good example of that, you know, when I can't think of his name now, ran for governor of the city of Illinois. Oh, Blagojevich. Hey, guy, I'm gonna set this on your show. Free Governor Blagojevich. Yes. Don't go right on. Yes. He did nothing wrong. Free him. You can't. They, they didn't have anything on him. Period. Yeah. I mean, he had no business in jail. But see, he's a perfect example of what the politician can do to you. Yeah. When you don't follow yeah. orders. Oh, you don't follow oh, rules. Right. Oh, jive judge. I mean, the judge can. Uh, I mean. I mean, they get they get they get they get enough on you. Yeah. They had enough on him. To uh, to put all put a lot of other stuff on him. See, I mean, little simple stuff. He's, they ask him to do simple things politically. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm, I don't, don't want to do that. But they insisted that he does it. He insisted, kept insisting that he yeah. do these things, and he wouldn't do any of it. So they said we might as well get rid of him. Yeah, right. They, you know. And I mean, he has no business going to jail for that amount of time. No business going to jail at all. For saying, in a joking manner, the only thing they had against him was a joke. A joke. On the telephone, he said, "Man, do you know we could we we, we could have got busy. We could have get we can get rich." Yeah, yeah, it's cold. All that money yeah, they offer, you know, all, yeah. all that money they offer for a, a, a senatorial position. Yeah. He didn't say he was going to take it. Mm. He said, we could get right, rich. Right, right. And that was what he was doing himself. It, during the same time, Greg, Senator Greg from uh, New Hampshire, I think it is, he was uh, asked to join President Obama's cabinet as Commerce Secretary, I think it was. And the deal was that, okay, I will accept this, but the governor must, report, uh, must appoint another Republican to serve out my term. The same thing that uh, Pre uh, Governor Blagojevich was doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then when he did appoint uh, Senator Burris, then he goes out to Washington there, Bert, uh, Do uh, Durbin and all them bastards, you know, going to treat him like he had done something wrong. You know, and we as a black community should have fought like hell to keep Senator Burris there. That's right. You know, we should have kept him in that seat. You know, because the man was a very good, uh, you know, legislator, and he's there. You know, but now what did we do? Well, you know, anyway, that's. But I respect well, you, uh, a, uh, Senator Burrs. It's, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things that we should be, that we could be doing, 
I'm talking about the black race right. we have to be doing because of our power, but we don't know our power. Mm -hmm. We don't, we think that we're, we, we, yeah. we accept the fact that people tell us that we're, well, you're, <laughs> the, you're the minority in Chicago. Yes. Who told you some stuff? Well, yes. you know, all those black people w moved out, out of the projects. Yeah. You know, they, they, 80,000 black people were moved out of their projects, went into the south suburbs. That's the first off. If you believe it was only 80,000 people in those projects, yeah. you're a fool. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can triple that amount. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. And number two, 80,000 didn't go to the south suburbs. That's right. You may have a few went to the south suburb, but the rest of them are still doing the same thing we're doing here with relatives and whatnot all over Chicago. Yep. Are they registered to vote? No. Are they registered to, uh, as, to do anything other than drive a car? Yeah. You know? So they're, they're under the radar because they come from Mississippi. They, they look hey, at hey, the jobs. Hey, hey, I'm from Mississippi. Well, okay, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, hey, that's your, you can talk about I'm your own town. <laughs> <laughs> they come from Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, name all of them. Yeah. And uh, they come here to, you know, looking for a good job, looking that's for it. a good place. That's so it. they stay with a relative. Right. And sometimes they end up staying with the relative three or four years. Yeah. Or longer. Yeah. Even though the relatives are one of them out, but they stick around anyway. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, most relatives from the South won't do that. Yeah. We, you know, I've, I've had, I know when my mother uh, had relatives to come, three and four relatives to come, mm -hmm. make a pallet on the floor. Yeah. If, you know, if they didn't have enough beds. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, exactly the way it was, you know. But it's a different time, different day. And I see a lot of fragmentation of things. Uh, it's uh, hopefully tomorrow is a better day. Well, we are out of time. It's a better day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for having me, WL. I well, appreciate it, my man. Well, Henry, you did a good yeah, job. Any time, I'm of, glad of to show Enlightening our public to a number of things, and uh, that's our our objective here on Straight Talk is to try and put word out there that people can really understand and realize that we have way more power than folks say we have. Yep. We have more influence than folks think we have. We have more power, period. But we don't, we don't use any of that. We don't use any of that. I'm not talking about being racist. I'm not talking about being anything but a human being right. in a city that you live. You have a right, you have a concern, you should have a destination. Destination, power. We'll see you this time again tomorrow, same time.